to another episode of From the Shadows. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying the series, please do drop a like on the video. Now, before we get into things today, uh, there's a few things I want to try and go over, basically. Now, I'm actually recording this on the day that it's going to go out, which is a rarity for me, particularly lately. Um, but that's because I had kind of a few days where I wasn't feeling quite so good again. And um, basically, I really wanted to talk about that firstly. Um, that's basically... Um, so people have, I've seen some comments, and I've talked to a few people in the comments about this, basically, who have given me some suggestions about stuff that they think is wrong as well. I don't know, you know, I don't really care what people's medical opinions are unless you're a doctor, but some people said that they were suffering from a condition that sounds very similar to what I've been suffering from, and it's very interesting, and that condition is CFS, or chronic fatigue syndrome. Now, there's a lot of stuff going around about it uh, a little bit lately. It also um, goes by the name of ME, which I believe stands for myalgic encephalopathy. Um, a friend of mine at school actually suffered from this, as did my cousin uh, when she was younger. So it's, you know, it's something, well, perhaps not runs in the family, but you know, what I mean and um, basically they seem to think that well there's no real they don't really know the causes of it as such and um, they seem to think that potentially things like glandular fever um, could somehow cause it now I did actually have glandular fever not recently but apparently because the virus lays dormant in you after you've got it the Epstein-Barr virus that is um, sometimes it can reoccur and I did have what my doctor thinks is a virus that week before I actually started getting sick if you guys remember I had a sort of I just bought, thought I had a cold basically but it seems that that might have been a sort of a virus and that might have set off some pretty nasty symptoms in me which I'm still sort of recovering from now or learning to manage and it means that I get some days where I'm just completely drained of energy um, at the moment today is a good day which is why I'm recording and I want to make sure that I didn't have any gaps basically and in fact today is a very good day I'm actually feeling pretty damn sprightly but that's why I'm trying to be careful um, on days like today basically so guys that um, um, I was talking to you about that, you know, let me know what you think, I suppose. Um, I'm still having some more tests. I'm going to see a hepatologist as well, um, just because my doctor wants to sort of uh, rule out anything. See, although he's already done that, he doesn't really know what else to do at this point. I think he just wants to make sure the liver is perfectly, completely normal. I've already had scans that say it is, but I think he wants me to see a specialist just so he can get that kind of, you know, peace of mind. And then we can start looking at other options because that's sort of the only thing left after that point, basically. Because the, the fact is that the liver problems I was suffering from pretty much can't cause most of the symptoms I've got anyway. And they're very, very minor as well. It is literally the tiniest bit off. Anyway, um, that's why I haven't been replying to comments possibly as quickly as I used to. Um, I'm going to try and do it after I've done these videos today, basically. So hopefully you would have had, you know, if you said something that actually has a replyable, you know, um, I don't always reply to comments that don't, you can't really say anything to. But, you know, so there we go. Um, a couple more things. Um, uh, we went through this a while ago, uh, but I feel like I have to reiterate it now because it's starting to creep back in is if you give me a suggestion, um, firstly, don't expect me to listen to it all the time because, you know, sometimes we, if everyone, if I listen to every single suggestion that everyone had, we'd never actually get anywhere. But most of the time I do because a lot of the time you come up with some fantastic suggestions. But what I mean is don't then expect it to be in the very next episode that you see because I would have had time to record that. And I keep getting sort of like, why haven't you done this? Like, well, you know, I haven't had a chance to do it yet. So just cut me some slack, particularly at the moment. Um, and finally, um, I've seen some stuff going around about how I should do more in episodes and like double my workload again. Now, I totally see where you're coming from, but the point is of me halving the workload was to halve my workload. So by doing double length episodes, it would defeat the point. Um, I can only talk for like 10, 15 minutes at a time at the moment without starting to feel very lethargic. It's actually quite stress, uh, quite draining to do this, but there you go. Um, so I just wanted to go over a couple of things just so you can kind of be on the same page and just try to just cut me a little bit of slack here. I'm doing my best to continue putting these videos out um, because I love doing it. Now, you've probably been staring at the screen for a little while wondering uh, kind of what's uh, been going on this month and it's not been great actually sorry we forgot to do a question of the day today's question of the day and i linked this one in because um i felt like it was important was what do you do outside or do you have a job outside youtube um, obviously yes um and what do you do now basically um yeah if you think that someone can live off of 9,000 subscribers then uh well it's not really the subscribers that matter it's actually the amount of views you get with those subscribers but yeah no you, this is not a livable amount it's pittance really it, and and it's not really doesn't really that matter to me really you know obviously i'd love it to be my job but that's sort of way 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 not even on the radar at the moment um basically what i do is i'm a well i was uh, or still am really i'm just sort of had to cut my workload down a bit lately i'm a freelance seo consultant essentially so what that means is that um i build and optimize websites for businesses and stuff like that but also um i build my own micro and macro niche websites if you don't know what that means it's, it's i'm not going to explain it but if you do then you know I, I know some of you guys actually do that stuff as well because i've talked to a few guys in the past in the comments that had a very similar kind of work to me so yeah um that's what i do what do you guys do Let me know in the comments what you do and also guys if you do have any ideas what we could do for 10k um then please do let me know because we are getting there relatively slowly it looks like we'll probably get there sometime in august if my projections according to my statistics sites are okay which is pretty fantastic to be honest i'll be really really pleased with that um things 
the I've already seen this idea. It's like, I know people sometimes always suggest a live transfer window. The reason I don't do it is because sometimes I can take literally hours and hours and hours over a live trans over a transfer window, and it would just be quite boring for you to watch, I think, um, because I don't really do a lot other than just look through players and players and players. And also the editing I'm required on that would be absolutely absurd, and I just don't have it in me at the moment to do something like that. Um, I, I, and I just don't think it'd be that entertaining, um, particularly as you will know what I do with my uh, scouting anyway. Um, the other one is like doing like, hour-long live com episodes, which is fine. It, it, it's good. It's But we did that with for Pompey for the 100th episode, and I'm trying to think of something a little bit different to do um, for 10K, since it is such a huge milestone in some respects. Anyway, if you've got any ideas, drop them in the comments. I'll be interested to see what you guys have to say. Right, and uh, yeah, let's get into things. It's been five minutes now. I do apologize for that, but I needed to get some stuff off because I've not recorded for like three or four days now. Um, so let's get into things. Now, in our last episode, we were a little bit unlucky, I feel, against Montpellier. Yeah, I mean... We weren't great for defending the two first goals, and we didn't really do enough to get back into the game in the end. But since then, we've kind of gone to a bit of a downward spiral that I'm not particularly enthused by. Now, in the next match, we were very, very lucky, for me anyway, to get a draw away at Grigion Bordeaux. Like, we took the lead. No, we didn't know what we're talking about. Alexis Bossetti gave them the lead on four minutes, and they really did kick on after that. But we did manage to equalise through Alberto Cherry. They then battered us for the rest of the game, and we'd basically score with our only shot on target of the entire match. So that is a point that we did not deserve to get, but we did it anyway. Also, apparently, um, I was pronouncing Salih Uchan's name correctly, thanks to some of my Turkish subscribers for uh, letting me know. I should have really guessed that, considering, you know, um, Emre Chan plays for Liverpool, and his name is basically the same, apart from the U on the front. Um, as for... Um, Gonzalo Paciencia. I don't like I was told how to pronounce his first name, which is fine, Gonzalo. But I'm still not entirely clear on the second name, so I'm just gonna go with Paciencia for now. Um I do apologize again if it's wrong. I will try and look it up, but yeah, that's that's I do like to try and get that sort of stuff right. But there you go, a one all draw isn't the worst result in the world. Next up we had a home game against Leon. If you remember, we actually beat them away from home last year. Yeah, it wasn't gonna happen this time. We were slightly better than we were against Bordeaux, but not enough to get the win. Annoyingly, they got both their goals in sort of the last 10 minutes. Maxwell Cornet's goal uh, with 10 minutes to go gave them the lead. I then went on overload and we got caught on the break, uh, conceded a penalty, which Hatem Benafa of all people put in the back of the net. It was a disappointing one. We've now had a bit of a poor run of results lately, and I don't think that's gonna uh, stop today. Next up we had Lille away from home, and. They were not having the best start to the year, but as you can see, we were utterly useless in this one. Filip Djordjevic gave them the lead on 32 minutes before Bogdan Stanku made it 2-0. And we've had a really, I don't know, I don't know what's changed. The tactic's the same. No real big injuries either. And that, I don't know, it just seems that that Nice game just destroyed our confidence. We really are going to have to get back on the horse at some point here. Uh, next up was Stad Rene, our um, affiliate club. And we were much, much better in this one. And I think we probably deserved more in a way. Um, this was the first time we looked good for a while. Paul George and Tep gave them the lead on 17 minutes. And it took us until a 90, uh, sorry, an 85th minute penalty from Jochen Bulens to earn us anything from this game. And that, I feel, was a little bit harsh. I think we maybe could have done a little bit better with the, the scoring in this one. As you can see, Urgent Aslan has now finally joined the club, so we can now see his stats properly. I think he's fantastic. He's only 18 years old. He's already worth £5.5 million. We got him for 7.5, I think. Um, and look at that. He's already that kind of level. I think he's going to be a hero for this save, personally, because he can play as an attacking midfielder or as a striker. Um, perhaps not in the sort of roles we'd like, but he's still got a little bit of potential there. Uh, you know, if we played him as a sort of um, an advanced forward, I'm not entirely sure how good he is for that role. Uh, if, I tell you what, apart from his off the ball and his heading is not great, but dribbling, finishing, first touch, solid, his passing is phenomenal. Determination is super high. His physicals are a little bit lacking in that sense, uh, but he's a big, powerful lad, and he's not exactly slow either. So I'm very, very pleased with Aslan. Um, hopefully he will you know, be that lion hide player that we needed. So we come to today's game against PSG, and that's always going to be a tough one in the best of times. I, I think it's going to be a long time before we can get our first win over them. Top scorer at the moment is Paciencia with uh, three, and then it's Pereira, Uchan, Bulens, Jerry, uh, Poirier, that must be for someone else, um, and Antelek with two, ago two goals apiece. As for assists, Pereira has four, uh, Paciencia, Gape, and Carrera. Again, that must be our... Uh, let me just turn off our... Under that's better. Sorry, I don't need all that stuff coming in there. I must have turned that on because I was playing my Pompey save over the weekend. That was fun. Um, so, key passes. Yeah, Quinta Pereira is dominating that as well. And how's things stand in the league at the moment? We are slap bang in mid-table, 15 points, 11 matches. Solid enough, six points above the relegation zone, and sort of six points off the top. Five, so it's sort of slap bang in the middle, but we need to do a bit better. Unfortunately, let I me mean, look at this. PSG have won the lead the last six years in a row. It's gonna take some time before we can kind of overthrow them, you know. And um, I think I got a little bit overly optimistic based on the start we've had, so we do need to try and get back on the horse. But I don't think today is gonna be that day. Now, um, this is always gonna be a crazy tough game. PSG squad is they spent 135 million in the off season. Uh, Gape is out injured. 
Apologies, this has changed for some reason. Because when I loaded my Portsmouth save up, it seems to have switched it to this for some reason. And I can't remember how to switch it back again. Aha, here we go. Uh, is it that one? Yes, that's the one. That's really strange. Um, so there we go. Uh, yeah, got, we've got Gonzalo, uh, Aslan, Pereira, Uchan, Yanvier, Bulens, Ten, Oban, Musava King, and Ruiz uh, has now finally got himself some match fitness, and we can alternate him and Sebastian Cantini now. So a little bit more uh, back up there. And the bench is looking a bit stronger too, with Cantini, of course, there, Cherry, Phillips, who's had a few games now, uh, or one game, uh, Chevalier, Jorkaev, and of course, as you can see, Didats is now back into full training. I don't know if he's actually going to be fit enough yet to do anything, but it's just nice to have him back in there, basically. So as a potential substitute. Aslan's not exactly lit the world on fire so far, but he has, you know, played two games. He's, you know, 7.15 in the games he's played for us. He's actually fairly solid. I'll tell you what, he hasn't scored or got any assists yet, I don't think, but clearly something's going right if he's getting that good kind of ratings, even in sort of poor performances we've had. So let's jump straight in. We're obviously massively underdogs for this game. Let's have a little look. So Insigne, Depay, Lamella, Hoiberg, uh, or Hoiberg, I can't remember how that um, O in Norwegian or Danish is pronounced. Uh, Romero, Mascherano, Digne, uh, David Luiz, Thiago Silva, Danilo, Sirigu, Ariola, Janma, interestingly, uh, Lucas Moira, Elianusi, Fred, <laughs> uh, Munoz, and Iturbe. Well, that is a dynamite team they've got right there. Um, I sense we're going to struggle. We are away from home as well, which isn't going to help. So playing on counter-attack is our best bet. It's going to be a steady stream of us getting beaten by these guys, I think, over the next sort of couple of years. But over time, we should slowly see us starting to get beaten by them by a smaller and smaller margins. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. I'm just going to smallen these down again, unfortunately. I always have them too big when I <laughs> have to play it in... Um, on my laptop so they've started well as you would expect but the longer we can go without conceding the better Insigne's ball and they're going to score immediately Thiago Silva and it's in the back of the net from a corner annoying to go off to such a poor start really but I, I guess that's all we can really expect it's going to be so difficult for us um, against these guys for quite some time really they're already seven points clear at the top of the league they're obviously going to win the league again and it is going to be such a massive effort to throw them but it's going to be a case of us just trying to get ourselves into that second spot and then trying to attack them from there sort of consolidate second and get some champions league football if we can which oh the the humanity okay um oh what are you doing oh this is where we need mr thomas we could bring him on and he absolutely fucks it up all uh, right okay it's gonna have to be didats he's a very very good player and it's time to give him some match fitness but hopefully aslan isn't gonna be out for too long oh no way not oh what a strike from memphis to pie so a corner and a free kick so far and they've only had two shots on target and they've scored both of them but look at the amount of shots they've already had in the first 10 minutes we've i yeah and i don't think it's anything to do with the tactic it's just that psg are so op um <laughs> in this league when you look at the team you've, they've got there's absolutely no surprise as to why they're so op obviously um but i just don't know quite how we're gonna oh plum i'm not another set piece though here we go go on clear it oh. We just look completely second best at the moment. And it doesn't help, I think, that we're coming into this game in probably the poorest form we've had since we were in the top flight uh, at this stage. Insignic, oh, dearie me, three players drawn to the ball. It's 3-0 to PSG. This could be a, um, th this could get a little bit ugly um, at this stage. I'm not really sure what we can even do. I don't want to throw it on attacking because we'll just end up getting even more destroyed by them. I think counter is definitely the best way to go in this. Uh, look at the amount of players we've got in the ball. Three players drawn to the ball. Um, that's poor, poor defending from us, but... Yeah, this is going to have to be... We are essentially... Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um, well, at least they haven't scored for... Te oh, never mind. Okay, clear it. There we go. Jochen Bulens finally gets a clearance in. Amazingly, we're managing to get 44% possession in this game. I'm not entirely sure how there. It's a good tackle from better 10, but he's taken so long to get back on his feet that it isn't going to make a difference. Anyway, Danilo's ball in. Oban clears it. Didats could have brought that down, maybe, but instead gets it away. Hoiberg... This is going to get whipped in by Danilo and surely just a simple header. Oh no, they're going to be a bit more... They play a little bit like we do, actually. Except much, much better than us. Uh, Danilo, Hoiberg on the edge here. Into Depay and Oba... Oh my life. Uh, what in the name of God happened there? It looked like it was being... It must have hit someone in the face. Oh, bring back the Chuckle Brothers defending again there. What was that? Cleared away... Oh my... Jesus Christ. We don't need any more bad luck in games like this. They're getting plenty of the the win anyway without shit like that happening. Um, there's, ah, it's just one of those games. I think the fact that we are in such poor form lately doesn't exactly help us. Um, I'm still disappointed to be 4-0 down at PSG, but what do you do? A change of tactic doesn't make any difference at this stage because we're 4-0 down. 
uh, do we throw caution to the wind and try and just get a couple of goals in this? Because we're already four down. And at this stage, what difference does it make? We may as well try and attack them a little bit and see if that makes any difference. I don't think it will. And if they continue to look like this, we'll probably just have to switch it back to counter because I don't want to get beat like 9-0 or something. You know, that would be a little bit embarrassing. I've rarely had results like that. Last time I had a result quite as bad as that was... Um... Oh my God. Um, they are just a cut above, really. Like, every single player they've got in their entire squad is better than anyone we've got, even close. And that's going to be a while before that changes, basically. We seem to be able to mix it at least with pretty much all the other teams in this league for now. Um, oh, wow. Another set piece. They are just... They're exploiting the corner kicks, that's for sure. They're doing my job. Um, wow, we should have trained defending set pieces here and not defensive positioning. Look at this. David Luiz... Flicks it down, and Memphis to pie this time with the header, putting it in for 5 0 to PSG. And this is going to ruin our goal difference. Uh, I don't know if the French league is done on goal difference or head to head. I've actually forgotten. Um, let's just have a little look, see if there's any teams on the same. Okay, it looks like it probably. Oh, not another free kick, surely. Wow, the rebound didn't go in the back of the net, everybody. That is the positive we can take from this game. We've just seen a rebound from a free kick that didn't go in. Um, I'm guessing the reason it didn't probably is because it hit the bar. Usually the goalkeeper has to save them in order for the rebound to go straight in. Um, Actually, I saw a rebound from a shot, uh, from a free kick like that, that was actually cleared. Um, it was against me, of course, because, you know, <laughs> that's how it happens. But it was interesting to see that actually happen for once. It seems like they went away for a bit. Like, it didn't really do that much for quite some time, and it seems to have come back again. It might just be the, you know, the swings and roundabouts of this game, because it's not been updated for quite some time. Depay, and it's Lamella at the far post. It is six. Right, I'm going back to counter-attack, because this is worse than we've actually... Considering we were playing better than we have been last year, we... Didn't play anywhere near as badly as this against PSG last season. That being said, the £135 million they've spent in the summer probably makes them at least sort of a 15 20% better side than they were then. Uh, I'm going back to counter. We're just going to have to try and write this one off here. I'm going to make a couple of substitutions. Get Uchan off if we can. Get maybe Chevalier and just to sort of rest a couple of players at this point because it is a, it's fruitless. Let's get Cherry on because... Pacencia has been absolutely non-existent up top. I know I've made all three substitutions. I'm going to encourage the team just because they need a little bit of mor morale at this point. Um, I'm not really sure what else that's going to do, but hopefully we can avoid conceding too many more goals if we just sit on counter and try to catch them on the break. But they've got better and better in this game and we've got sort of steadily worse, really. Um, go after the worst possible opportunity, worst possible start. All those sort of set pieces and free kicks and throw-ins have just doomed us in this one. Um, and our own ability to defend really and some of the sort of Chuckle Brothers-esque defending. Oh, hello. Are we going to nick a goal? That'd be amazing. More likely they're going to get a goal from our own throw-in in their final third. That seems much more uh, sensible because it's going to... Uh, we've got a lot of players back but they'll still find a way through. Elianusi now. Um, oh, people are getting drawn to the ball a little too much. We've got this lovely little compact unit but it does mean that we are vulnerable on the flanks if... They exploit them, and obviously it's PSG, they're going to exploit the flanks. Look at the wingers they've got, Depay, and oh, those are just going in for them, aren't they? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, it's seven. It, it's definitely seven. And they deserve to win this game, obviously. Seven, actually, to be honest, we've played that badly that seven probably isn't even that harsh. But everything's going in for them, really, isn't it? Look at the edge of the area. Great strike from Romero. Seagrass is way behind on the dive, and it is seven nothing. Poor. Um, not much we can really do about that, though. Ah, oh dear. Just some good goals. They are flying in this league. But if you notice that Marseille's goal difference is actually not bad compared to theirs. Um, PSG haven't been scoring that many until today. We've kind of just left the... Oh, this is probably the worst performance I've seen from Paris FC since we started this save, um, really. And no, we can fault the boys. They conceded seven goals, Dante. Get it together, man. Um, yeah, I apologise for you having to see that, to be honest. Um, but, you know, that's what happens when you're going to, you know, you're going to lose games against PSG for quite some time when we're going to be live coming these games. Uh, that's just how it's going to have to be for a bit. But hopefully we've kind of gone through our bad patch and we can kind of, oh, we've got a game against um, Bastia that might give us a bit more confidence. Then we've got to play Monaco, though. So it might not be quite as uh, simple as that. Hopefully, though, in our next episode, we'll have some more sort of positive things to tell you about. Uh, I'm trying to think what the next episode should be. Be. Um, there's not really any conceivable winter break at the moment, so I'm thinking perhaps. Uh, hmm. Should we do. Let's do Toulouse. No, let's do Nantes. Let's do Nantes for the next match. Uh, try and move things along a little bit. A little bit more, anyway. Um, just to sort of keep the motor running. But things are going pretty well. It, you know, we're still 10th in the league. We're looking quite comfortable. Um, you just kind of do need to cut out results like that. We've not been scoring many lately. As you can see, in our last sort of seven matches, uh, we've only scored one goal the most in any of those matches and we've only managed four in our last seven and in that same spell we've conceded like 15 16 goals maybe even more than that actually uh 5 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 goals um, in our last seven matches. We need to tighten up at the back. That That's absolutely clear. Anyway, guys, um, if you like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video. And if you've liked it even more than that, please subscribe to my channel for more Outcaster icons and from the shadows in your inbox every other day at the moment at 7 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode for a game against Nantes, where hopefully we've had a couple of wins just to sort of solidify things. Otherwise, we will start to slide back towards the relegation zone, and we do not need that right now. Hopefully, the injury to Aslan isn't too serious either. Anyway, guys, I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.